What is cracking, everybody? It is Mega Pie Man here, and welcome to another episode of Mod the World, your one stop shop for mods for any game by any one of anything. Today, we're taking a look at a mod for Half Life 2 called Half Life 2 Wars, being developed by the Half Life 2 Wars development team. Creativity at its finest. What is Half-Life 2 Wars? Well, it's actually a really cool thing. It takes the idea that they did with Halo a little while back with Halo Wars by taking a first-person shooter and making an RTS out of it instead of what companies keep trying to do today, which is take old RTSs and make first-person shooters out of them. It takes the entire world of Half-Life. All of the stuff from Half-Life 2, I think maybe some Episodes 1 and Episode 2, I'm not so sure about that. But it takes all of that and it presents it in an RTS fashion that allows you to play it like an RTS. Now, there are two yeah, factions that exist in Half-Life 2 Wars. There is the Rebels that I'm playing as currently right now. That you, you know. I guess you play as Gordon Freeman controlling the Rebels. But you also have the Combine that you can play as, playing as whoever in the world controls the Combine. I honestly, I don't know who's in charge of the entire thing. But you can pick one of those two factions. You can pick one of the very few maps. Right now we're on a two-player map. I believe this map is called Forest. There's a couple maps in the game. I believe there is a six-player map, maybe an eight-player map. I'm not so sure about that. But it's actually really fun. I really enjoyed it. Now, I've played some RTSs in the past, like uh, Dawn of War, Dawn of War 2, StarCraft 2, Axis and Allies, that kind of thing. And pretty much anything that I've seen in those games, I have seen in this game. This game is a little bit more of a traditional RTS with base building instead of just something like Dawn of War 2, which focuses only on unit composition. But it's actually really cool. One of the things that I do like in this Maybe game say, is, as you see, there's those little circles around that pile of rocks. Now, what that is, is if you tell a unit to go and stand in that circle, they will actually take cover, which is actually really cool. I haven't seen that in a lot of RTSs that I have played. The only one that I Doesn't can think of off I the think? top of my head that I personally have played would be Dawn of War 2 that would have a cover system. So it's actually really nice. But this game... It's, it's good, it presents yeah, it itself well, it's got pretty much everything that I would expect to see in an RTS game, everything that I've seen in an RTS game, but it does lack a little bit of content, we'll get into that a little bit later. As you see, I've been going around capturing these different control points that are represented by flags. And that's one of the ways that you get resources in, in order to build things. Now, in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see your mini-map. You can click around on your mini-map to go around all over the place, see the entire map. But next to the mini-map, you actually have a flag symbol and a gear symbol. Now, the flag symbol is your Requiem. I believe that is what it is called. That you get every couple seconds from your control points. That is stuff that's mainly used for making units. It's also used for making some buildings, but things like buildings and upgrades, especially the more advanced buildings, say, and I believe only upgrades, they have to use scrap. Scrap is what the gear symbol is. Now, as you see, I have uh, some units that are running back mm -hmm. and forth away from the headquarters, running back to the headquarters, and then running away from the headquarters every now and then. Those are my engineers. Those guys are what are used to build buildings. They're also what's used hey, to collect scrap from scrap piles. They're similar to like the SEVs from StarCraft 2. They're your builders and your workers they, they they just go and gather stuff but the scrap piles unlike in a game like starcraft 2 the scrap piles are usually a good distance away from your main base or your main headquarters you can of course build another headquarters nearby if you have enough resources but of course you have to have enough resources now there are the upgrades you can get the buildings i have right now like this building the building I'm building right now is just to get myself a bit more population, since about? there actually is a population cap. You can only have so many units on the field at one time. But the other building that I have, headquarters being the one with the crane on it, the other building, that building allows me to make more units. I can make soldiers and medics, about? even a guy with a flamethrower. There is another building that I'm building right now. I believe it's called a triage center. That allows me to get health upgrades, energy about? upgrades, and that I can upgrade my units in general. And then the specific units, such as the specific soldier, you can then, if you have enough scrap, you can um, 
upgrade them to have shotgun, or you can upgrade them to carry a AR-2 rifle, I believe is what it's called. I think you have to get another building that is... It's not a barracks. It's it's basically like a, a, a supply depot, an ammunition depot, basically something like that. That would then allow you to use those upgrades, and they're actually pretty powerful. Now, there is a lot of difference between playing as the Rebels and the Combine. I haven't played as the Combine a whole lot, but that building I'm destroying right now... That, that generator thing, that's basically, if I had to compare it to something else, that is basically your pylon from the Protoss from StarCraft 2. As you see, if I destroy that, the building goes black. That means that building is currently inactive, and that's mainly the thing that the Combine play a around. They have to have something powering their buildings in order for them to be active. If there's nothing powering them, then they go black and they can't be used, whereas the Rebels, mm -hmm. they don't actually need that. They can run anything at any time, which it makes for some varying mm -hmm. gameplay. I haven't played as the Combine enough to really see the difference in the mm -hmm. unit composition. I do know that in the world of Half-Life 2, the Combine yeah. have more resources and more different types of troops to be utilized than the Rebels do, which is one of the things that is actually kind of... That I don't actually like. I, I I do like it and I don't like it about Half-Life 2 Wars. At the moment, Half-Life 2 Wars is it feels like it's a very balanced game, but it lacks some content. There's not a whole ton of units. There's not a whole ton of strategies, at least from I've played. Of course, I've only played offline. There is a online ability in this uh, mod. I haven't tried it yet because I usually get my butt kicked. And the best strategy that I've come up with is basically to make a bunch of soldiers, give them shotguns, and run to the enemy base. Hey, Doc. And that has worked for me. There's a, probably some other tactics that you can go for. I haven't really found anything else that works. There are Vortigons that are more advanced units that you can get as the Rebels. I don't know what the the uh, the equivalent on the Combine sign is. Maybe Antlions? Maybe. But there's not a whole lot of units. There are and there aren't a lot of units. There's no vehicles. There's no air units. There's no sea units, Doesn't unfortunately. And if you were to try to make units like that, I think that that would actually make the game a bit more unbalanced. Because the Combine definitely have more of that sort of composition in the Half-Life 2 universe than the Rebels do. Now, as I said before, there are only a couple maps. The game type I'm playing right here is called Annihilation. There are a couple game types. There's one that... Oh, I can't remember. It's it's called, Doesn't like, Outlast or something. It's basically a, a horde mode thing where you're shooting at ant lions as the combine. I believe that's already in. The only one I've played as is Annihilation. There are probably, of course, um, there are other game types. I haven't played any of them, unfortunately, so I can't tell you about them, but... The maps have been really in-depth. I've really enjoyed the game so far. It's been a bit of a learning curve. There is a tutorial that you can play yeah, to get used to the tutorial. tutorial isn't super great, but it does exist to give you an idea. It's a big, it's a big trial and error yeah, trying to figure this game out at this point. Whether the developers will make the tutorial a better later on... That's something we'll have to wait and see. Let's build a little bit more population here so that I can capture the rest of these points and then run into the Combine. Hey, Doc. Now, there is one thing in specific that I don't like about this game. I think you can turn it on and off, but that is that there are random supply drops. I don't know if we've seen any of these as of yet in this particular game, but there are random supply drops. They're random boxes with a big plus on them, basically, that will parachute out of the sky. Whoever goes to grab it first will get whatever is in it. I've gotten extra Requiem from them. Yeah, you, you can get extra, extra resources. I've gotten extra units. I got an ant lion from one once. I got a combined soldier playing as the rebels from one once. So that was a bit interesting. You can also get supply drops that are actually anti-supply drops. That are basically, I go up to it and it's a barrel that's on fire and about to explode. So... I think you can turn those off. They feel a little bit cheap. It's a nice way to try to get a bit more units, but they, to me, they feel a little bit cheap. Now, as you can see here, I'm using my tried and true tactic. I've got soldiers, they've got shotguns, and we're basically just running into the main base. I believe I gave those soldiers the AR-2 rifle just to see what it's like. But we're just running into the main base. I've upgraded my soldiers so that they have the ability to throw grenades, which are actually really, really powerful in this game. 
You can also unlock more units such as veterans and whatnot. But you throw the grenade and I'm going to get a victory here in a moment. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Mob the World. This has been for Half-Life 2 Wars. Be sure to check it out. It is currently being developed by the Half-Life 2 Wars development team. And it's good. I haven't seen anything in this particular RTS that I haven't seen in other RTSs. And if they're able to do that in a mod, whereas AAA titles do that in big games, I think that this game actually has uh, a lot going for it. So thank you guys for watching. I've been Mega Pie Man, and I will talk to you guys later.